In today's preaching, we will be looking at upcoming titles such as The Evil Within The Elder Scrolls Online And lastly, Star Wars Battlefront Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome. My name is Prophet and I welcome you to the first preaching in quite some time. First up we will be talking about The Evil Within, which is a horror, horror survival game developed in Japan where it was known as Psycho Break. Uh, the game is developed by Tango Gameworks and is being published by Bethesda Softworks. Gameworks Softworks. I think there's something there, guys. We need to look into this. Anyway, the game is coming out for both uh, Windows, PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Xbox 360, Xbox One, a whole lot of consoles there. And, you know, I am not supposed to be kind of hyping games pre-release. I'm not supposed to do the media, the PR work or anything like that for the company. But I have to say that this seemed to be kind of my type of horror game, really. Because... That it reminds me a lot of games like Outlast, but again, it brings up a lot of cool themes, it seems a lot more developed, a lot more sound and good. Because everybody knows that Outbreak, or Outlast, I think Outlast that was made by like a small company, and it didn't seem like the budget was that high. As well as the enemies like halfway through, they got boring, in my opinion. But this seems like to be a really big, strong game. And we know that Japanese companies, they actually have a tendency to make strong and good games. But of course, they have they have misstepped quite a few times here and there. But I think this game might be it. It might be something really good. And what is important to note from the launch trailer teaser that I showed is that this is not in-game footage. This is not, like, I think this is real actors. I'm pretty sure this is real actors. And it's important to note that this is not how the game will be. Now, we have seen uh, some gameplay trailers, gameplay footage over the past, uh, past weeks, past months. And honestly, it looks pretty, pretty good. But, of course, take everything into consideration. This is important to note, really, uh, not just with this that pretty much every launch trailer that you will see is not really game footage. It's pre-rendered footage and like everyone, any studio can make pre-rendered footage look good if they do their, if they actually put a decent amount of time into it. Because yeah, that is nothing to do with actual game really. For example, uh, take Blizzard and how they make their, their trailers and movies, which is like really realistic. But then you come into World of Warcraft and it's like, yeah, it's not, it's not the same, but of course, yeah, just remember that, always keep that in your mind, because that is really important. Now, the game was actually uh, revealed back in 2012, April, and then it were actually wearing the project title of, uh, or working title of uh, Project Sway, Sway, Shoi, I don't know how to pronounce it, but uh, yeah. In later on in April 2013 it was actually announced that it would be released by Bethesda so that's pretty cool I'm pretty hyped about that that will be launched and released at 26th of August in North America of course if you're European we have to wait until the 29th I don't know why that is you know that is also something that I it really pisses me off personally that just because we live in Europe, we're getting screwed over by every company. Holy shit. For example, Steam. Steam, I'm not supposed to go on a tantrum about Steam right now, but Steam really miss fucks me over. Because, well, if something costs $6, it's gonna cost 6 euros. And the euros are a lot stronger than the dollar, so... They're basically just lifting up their customers, stabbing them with a knife, just saying, PAY! PAY! And just like trying to milk, like opening our guts and pulling our money out. God damn it. I'm sorry, that was probably really loud. My bad. Yeah. 
awkward. When Detective Sebastian Castellanos and his partners, Joseph Oda and Julie Kid Kidman, rush to the scene of a gruesome mass murder, a mysterious powerful force is laying in wait for them. Witnessing the killing of fellow police officers, one after another, Sebastian is then attacked and loses consciousness. Waking up in a land where monsters are wandering about, Sebastian has to fight his way through a world of death and its close friend, Madness, in order to understand what is going on. Sebastian has to face his fears in order to survive on a journey to discover what lies in the shadows of that mysterious force. Taken from Wikipedia, The Evil Within. So, The Elder Scrolls Online have been out for a bit of time actually when it comes to alpha, pre-alphas, testing, all of that, but apparently the early access was just launched today as I'm making this video, and honestly, it seemed pretty darn good when it comes to a few things like latency, when it comes to crashing, all of that, seemed to be all nice, all neat, and if you watch someone like Force Strategy, who have a ton of content about just this, he will go far in depth on how the game works on day one, on the launch, and I would definitely recommend you guys checking that out. He have a lot of content from the entire early access period, he have from the alpha period, he have everything that you really want to know about the game. I will not sit here and pretend like I know all about it, but I did try it out in the early accessing parts, not, not the, this early access, but alpha and whatnot, I had a key. And honestly, to me, it felt a lot less like an actual Elder Scrolls game, more, yeah, more in the genre of any other MMO, which is, to me, not what I wanted. It is not what I am looking for, because I was really psyched, and really psyched, I was really hyped when I could hear that, oh, another Elder Scrolls game is coming out. I was almost, I was this close ready to actually pre-ordering something. I hate pre-ordering. I know what happened last time. Rome 2 Total War sucked shit. But I still love the game. I love Rome 2 Total War. Sega, please love me. CA, send me free stuff. Anyway, <laughs> anyway the point is that honestly, after playing it, like I tried to get my loot. You know what happened? Every chest, every fucking rear was taken. God damn it, everything was taken, everything was already looted, and I was like, oh, well, here we go. And, oh, is that a chest? And I tried to grab it, and it was like, nothing in it. It was empty, and it was open and looted, and I'm like, ah, why? Why can't I have my loot? So, I was not given my loot, and I never got it. And it made, my, made me sad. But, of course, that was a ton of player more than it is right now, so... I don't know how it would be right now. So... Again, I felt like the way that you had your ability system, uh, all of that, it, it felt not my st my type. I definitely can see myself going in and back and playing it because it seemed looked like a really interesting game. And I, of course, I love the storyline and the lore behind entire Elder Scrolls franchise. But the MMO parts kind of set me off. But hey, we will see what happens. I might go back to it. But definitely do check out, check out for strategy for more, more content of this as he is the one's footage that I have been showing. Not much of it. Hey. Okay, lastly, in today's preaching, we will be taking a look at Star Wars Battlefront 3. Well, honestly, the title just says Star Wars Battlefront and not 3. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but let us just talk a bit about this. Apparently, after looking at my upcoming releases, it has not been specifically announced what date, but it has been announced that it will be released, apparently. So that is great, I am looking forward to that. 
and I love it. I really do love it. Oh my god, it's so sexy. What I mean is that, technically, we don't know too much about it, honestly. Like, But knowing about the previous games, it is amazing. Star Wars Battlefront 1 was kind of quirky. It's okay. Star Wars Battlefront 2 is one of my favorite games of all times. If you remember back to my previous, uh, previous, previous AMA or q and I talked about my favorite games and that is definitely on the list. Not only is the actual gameplay fantastic for its age, of course, but I mean, one of the earlier games where you could use all kind of vehicles, uh, towers, and still put yourself into the Star Wars franchise and everything about that, L real live, uh, real tactical battles, uh, fight it out with your friends. M massive. You had. You could play it online. You could play it locally, LAN wise, split screen, whatever. It was amazing. You could even play as fucking Jedi's and Siths and all kind of heroes, which is amazing. It is. Oh my god. Being able to run around with someone with lightsaber, Darth Maul was my favorite because you could like wham 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 just swing or shit around everywhere, and it was amazing. It was truly amazing. At least when I, I played this when I was a lot, yeah, lot younger, of course. Because I feel like I'm 10 years old still. And it was amazing. It was truly a great time of my life. And yeah, if I could go back there, I would defi I definitely would have. And it is amazing. It is truly great. But that was Star Wars Battlefront 2. Star Wars Battlefront 3 is apparently going to be developed by DICE. And I'm not a big fan of the entire Battlefield franchise, honestly. I I like what what they're where they're going with the entire Battlefield, but I hate battle log. If I get a battle log for this shit, I'm going to be furious. I do not want to see fucking internet browser to play my game. Okay? No, no way. Not even close. If I need to fucking go open my browser to be able to play my game. I'm going to be pissed. But anyway, some of the things that I want them to change is mainly I want them to continue the storyline. Oh my god. Because... Star Wars Battlefront 2, then you could have kind of multiple campaigns. One was the Star Galactic the Conquest, where you would go around Star System, you would float around and play it kind of risk. It's not 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 risk, but you have uh, you have your main uh, star cruiser which you are using to conquer new planets, and a different planet gives you income. And through income, you can buy cards, which gives you different bonuses, or you can buy new units. Now, of course, buying new units also gave your opponent AI new units, so that was quirky and weird. Yeah, that, that was weird. They would, they would just spend everything on actually buying cards and you had to spend everything on buying uh, units and cards. But it did not matter really. It was a great deal of fun playing that game. I loved it. And then you had the other one, which is uh, actually... Sorry. And then you had other campaign, which was the actual campaign. That was the Diary of the 501st Legion. For those of you who do not know... That is Anakin's personal legion and the one that he kind of uh, grew up with during the, his Jedi period, at least. This is shown in uh, the cartoon, uh, The Clone Wars. Basically, Anakin was in control of this legion, which was uh, the 501st. And it is basically their entire storyline here, uh, where you can see that they start out um, doing different tasks and such for the uh, Republic fighting on their side and then eventually having to follow and execute order 66 which of course is the revolution revolt uh, everything all of that uh, transformation to the empire and all of that and it was great because in one mission this is amazing this is, uh, they're helping i do not remember the green no the blue chick the blue chick with the tits uh, and two laser lightsabers right when they are helping her and she is like, you are some of the bravest soldiers I've ever fought with. And he, the guy who is like uh, kind of writing the diary or like audio recording it is like, none of us could look her in the eye. 
because we knew what we would have to do. And it really shows how the entire world was from a, like a trooper's standpoint. And that was amazing. It was really like something. I, and I'm, it, it touched me deep and I still remember it. I still have it deep in my heart how the Death Star was exploded and they're sad because like a lot of their friends, a lot of their comrades uh, in arms just have died for nothing and they're really mad about that. It was, it was a beautiful storyline, and even though I might have spoiled parts here, does not matter, still worth a playthrough, I've played through it multiple times, it is amazing. And I want to see something more of that, I want to feel how it is to be a trooper, because everyone I've seen the story from the Jedi's and the Sith's point of view, we had the Old Republic, all of that, we had Knights of the Old Republic, we have Jedi Academy, we have everything, but... Battlefront is pretty much the game where you play as the clones, you play as the actual troopers and feel how it is to be a war soldier and how it is to really experience what you experience and that is great, amazing and I want to see more of that story type and line. Yeah, this rant lasted a bit long. Anyway, so I hope that you have been enjoying this video. My name is Prophet and I thank you. You have just been preached.